Whether it's climate change or the coronavirus pandemic, President Trump repeatedly rejects advice from specialists. He refuses to follow the science. Well, scientists have apparently decided it is no longer enough to let the facts speak for themselves. This week, Scientific American, the oldest magazine in the U.S., ended a 175-year policy of staying out of presidential politics. The magazine's editor-in-chief, Laura Helmuth, tweeting this, for the first time in the 175-year history of Scientific American, we are endorsing a political candidate. Please vote for Joe Biden to support science, health, the environment, evidence-based policy, and reality over disinformation. Well, I am joined tonight from Washington, D.C. by Laura Helmuth, editor-in-chief at Scientific America. Laura, it's good, it's good to have you on the show. We're happy you're with us um, this evening. Before we talk about your decision to endorse Joe Biden, we want to remind viewers of, of what the U.S. president has been saying. I want you to take a listen to an exchange at a town hall event broadcast on ABC this week. And it's probably going to go away now a lot faster because of the vaccine. It would go away without the vaccine, George, but it's going to go away a lot faster. It would with go it. away without the vaccine? Sure. Over a period of time. Sure. With time, it goes and many away. deaths. And you'll develop, you'll develop herd, like a herd mentality. It's going to be, it's going to be herd developed and that's going to happen. That will all happen. But with the vaccine, I think it will go away very quickly. All right. So that's just one example. And it's not, he meant herd immunity, not herd mentality. But uh, we were wondering today, how do you agree to change a 175-year policy? Was there a particular moment in this presidency when you thought, okay, now we have to say something? Yeah, it's not a decision we took lightly. Um, you don't break 175 years of tradition uh, without a really good cause. Uh, when we came together as an editorial team about three months ago to discuss our election plans, um, you know, every, it was all hands. Everybody came together. We talked through it, and it was unanimous. And it was we pretty quickly came to agreement that Trump has been just so catastrophic for science throughout his administration, but particularly during the global pandemic, that we can't be silent. Uh, that we have to show what we know and, and stand up for reality. Was it was it was it the pandemic then the, the coronavirus is that the you know the straw that broke the camel's back for you Yeah although I think you know even without the coronavirus pandemic um, given how, how you know, he pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Accord, he's trying to withdraw from the World Health Organization. Um, he's it just been you know, devastated the federal science force. His travel bans have interfered with international collaborations. Um, so he's, it, he's really been harming the process of science in the United States and around the world throughout his administration. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the pandemic really shows just the deadly consequences of having policies that are based on fantasies um, and rejection of expertise. Yeah, we've got more than 190,000 people dead just in the United States. Um, you write that Trump has damaged the U.S. Um, do you believe that President Joe Biden would be able to repair that damage? Yeah, I think so. And, and I think it should be his top priority. I mean, obviously, there, there has been just a lot of damage in a lot of ways that from the Trump administration. Um, but I think, you know, if, if Biden wins and if he comes in committed to restoring, um, you know, the Science Foundation, uh, restoring, uh, you know, experts uh, weighing in on all the big policy decisions facing us, if he starts to take climate change seriously, take the pandemic seriously, um, I think those are, you know, his most urgent issues. There, there's been some criticism of your decision. The, the author and evolutionary psychologist Jeffrey Miller tweeted some things today. He tweeted that Scientific American gives up all pretense of scientific objectivity, betrays its historical principles, and goes full partisan just for some cheap short-term virtue signaling. Let me ask you, Laura, are you politicizing science with your decision? Uh, we don't think so. I mean, this isn't a legitimate defense if there's like a schoolroom fight, but we didn't start it. 
I mean, Trump's the one who's been politicizing science, who's, uh, you know, been been claiming that the virus was a hoax, claiming that climate change is a hoax and sharing conspiracy theories about, you know, really important things that we actually have scientific evidence about. So from our perspective, you know, he's the one who's politicizing science by by calling, you know, by misrepresenting it and rejecting it. And, you know, at Scientific American, we consider it our mission to kind of show how the world works, which, you know, in better times is talking about how black holes work or evolution or viruses. Um, but we feel like it was part of our mission and, and our responsibility, really, to say, given our expertise in, in the enterprise of science, we can say really clearly, based on the evidence from the Trump administration, that he's not qualified and Joe Biden would be so much better for, for the U.S. and for the world. Have you have you acted too late, Laura? Do you wish that you had um, made this decision earlier? Yeah. So in in 2016, when Trump was a candidate, a Scientific American, we ran a, an editorial saying that he has shown a disdain or contempt for science, and that any world leader needs to, just as a bare minimum, um, accept reality, accept evidence, you know, be you know open to uh, scientific findings. And so at that point, we came very close to saying, don't vote for Trump. Um, but we didn't make that next step and say, do vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and then his administration has just been even worse than we expected, even worse than we warned. And so this time we felt like we needed to make that final step and say, really, here's who you need to vote for if you care about science. You know, it, it seems like we have two developments going on here. We've got Trump's attacks on science and we've got, you know, a, a part of the public and its willingness to reject science. You can vote Trump out of office at the ballot box. You cannot change the minds of masses of people as easily or as quickly. What do you say to that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a real problem. Um, surveys, especially by the Pew Research Foundation, they've been finding a kind of a growing polarization in, um, in acceptance of science or respect for science. And it used to not be that way. Um, it, you know, science used to have really strong bipartisan support. And it's really been a few wedge issues um, you know, climate change is the top one where um, th there's been just a disinformation campaign where people have tried to undermine the science and say it's all a conspiracy. And, you know, scientists and journalists are all part of some cabal and we're somehow making money off of climate, ch climate change. And I mean, none of us want climate change. We would all be delighted if it was somehow an error in the data. Um, but we see every day in wildfires, in hurricanes, in temperature records, that it's not a fluke and it's not made up. It's happening now and it's already harming people. Do you think, Lord, that um, the situation would be better for everybody concerned if we had more scientists going into politics? I think so. And I, I hope that more scientists get involved. And I think a lot of them have been moved to do so. We have a, an organization called, um, I think, the 314 Project, which is for the first digits of pi, 3.14. Mm -hmm. And um, they're having scientists run for lo local, state, and federal uh, office. There aren't very many scientists who are involved in politics. And we think, um, we just think it would help a lot. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Um, there's plenty of attorneys um, in politics, I think maybe a good dose of science would do everybody some good. Laura Helmuth, Editor-in-Chief at the magazine Scientific American. Laura, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us and get your story out. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.